can start our rest of the labs. Last time we have done the command injection attack. Now we're going to try the CSRF, file inclusion, file upload, and some process scripting vulnerabilities. So let's have a look on the CSRF, which is your cross site record forgery. Cross site record forgery is an attack which is basically an attacker sends a request to an uh, authenticated, uh, authenticated user on an application part. So it basically uses it for initiate, uh, execute initiate commands in, instead of in behalf of the victim side. So over here, if you talk about the bug bounty part, you can see cross site request forgery attack. So cross site request forgery are the basic are the major vulnerability which is found on the web application part, which is your API. And through the cross site scripting, major attacks arise, which is your cross site request forgery or CSRF attack occurs when a malicious website let's do it a big see this one a cross article forgery or a csrf attack occurs when a malicious website emails instead a message application etc causes a user browser to perform some actions on another website whether the user is already authenticated or logged in so in the layman language if i talk about the cross article forgery attack is an attack where an attacker craft a request and execute behalf of the victim side which is already authenticated on that specific application so in this major vulnerability there is an also known as csrf token csrf token is a token validation part from the server side which is authenticated which is a token session related to a individual user when an application has been logged in so agar main baat karu jab bhi aap login karte ho to server side ke through aapko ek token milta hai aur wo token hota hai aapka csrf token जो कि हर एक यूजर को ऑथेंटिकेटेड के टाइम पे मिलता है जैसे कि अगर आप यहाँ पे सिनेरियो देखो जैसे कि फोर पॉइंट्स दे रखे हैं बॉब्स के बारे में सो बॉब लॉग्स इनटू द बैंक ऑफ द अकाउंट परफॉर्म सम बैंकिंग डज नॉट लॉग आउट ही स्टिल ही स्टिल ही यूजिंग द एप्लीकेशन पार्ट बॉब चेक हिज ईमेल एंड क्लिक आर लिंक व्हिच इज अनफेमिलियर वेबसाइट अ लिंक हैज बीन सेंट टू द बॉब ईमेल अकाउंट व्हिच इज बेसिकली अनफेमिलियर व्हिच इज अ मलिशियस वेबसाइट An unfamiliar website, you can see. Unfamiliar website make a request to Bob Banking site to transfer some money, passing in the cookie information stored on the Bob Banking session. So whenever we are logging to an application, a cookie parameter, which is a session period of time, has been executed. That our user is already authenticated over there. And our major presence is, you can see, the Bob Banking website receive the request from an unfamiliar malicious sites without using a CSRF token. and process the transfer a csrf token is the major part where an authenticated purpose can be done a work of the purpose can be done over there in the major guideline even if you see over here even more interesting is the idea that the link is is a malicious website could be contain an invalid an invalid html which does not require bob to click image source www.malicious.com which is a normal javascript see this one. a csrf token is a major important part which can be helpful for attacking purpose csrf attack you can see csrf attack they can be mitigated a number of ways from the most popular in csrf token which is used to be validated which may be submitted from potentially the data altering from the request like your post request or the get request it can be transferred in both of the parameter values it transfer can it can be transferred from the url section or the post form sections so let me show you how does it looks like so we're going to use our bug fit and over here you can see the csrf which is your cross site request forgery has an application which is saying change your password a csrf token can be in any of the form just like your button which is your change button over there so what i'm going to do i'm going to name this one twr dot and i'm going to use my bug fit So, but I'm going to use my bug fit for intercepting all the requests over here. So, in this case, I'm going to intercept will be on, and my major thing will be to intercept the packet. So, I can see over here, the packet has been intercepted. Remember one thing: when you are changing some values from an application, there should be a CSRF token 
in the cookie parameter or it could be a, a different parameter also. But some of the applications are not validating the server side request. So let's have a look. I made a request on the server side, which is a new password which is stored and told. And in the different server, and I'm going to use a different browser also over here, Chromium. So, yes. So here he's all, the, the different user is also authenticated over there. So we have two different browsers. We have a Firefox and we have the Chrome also. So in this, what I'm going to do, So I'm going to drop the packet, uh, but before that, I'm going to send this packet to the engagement tool. Why? Because I'm going to make a, my HTML forum, my own HTML forum. So in, in engagement tool, you can craft your request. So engagement tool and we're going to use generate CSRF POC. So you can see they have given me a proper HTML forum that can be used in a different part. And what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to drop the packet. So the packet has been captured over here on my CSRF POC generator. So you can see we have a proper HTML forum. And the CSRF attack could be on the parameter value. For example, you can see they have given the value toad or the password change parameter and confirmation also. And why this happening? Because there was no CSRF token. If there was a CSRF token, we can try different kinds of method over there. So in my scenario, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the option and I'm going to include an auto submit part, an auto submit button. Why? Because auto submit button, if, if the client will click, if the victim will click on that specific HTML forum, the, the, uh, the request will be generated automatically. See, there is a now a submit button over there on a different script tag. So copy the HTML forum. And uh, I'm going to make it in a form of text file. So I'm just making a normal text file. And I'm going to save it on the desktop. And I'm going to name this one csrf.html. The .html forum is the important part. So let's do this one. So we know a different user is running in a different session. Firefox has a different session and the Chrome has a different session over here. So our major perspective would be we're going to run some commands over here to execute in behalf of the second user because they are in two different regions. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run this command and uh, what we can do in other options. Okay, let's move it over here. Other options, let's uh, open in web browser like a Chrome name. So over here you can see the current password, the new password and the confirmation password over there. But in our side, it was only a new password and a confirmation password. So let's see what happened over there. Did we change the password? Let's use admin and the password. Okay, so Let's have a look over here again. Let's open in the same browser. Over here, the password has been changed. Hmm. 
the password has been changed on the same session of the application card. Mm -hmm. So if an attacker craft any packets and send a link to the malicious uh, victim side, if it execute the execute that uh, malicious piece of link, so it will be executed behalf of the attacker. So it's like a victim attack side. It's a client side attack. And through the CSR attack, process request for the attack, an account there could be a many things can be happen. A account takeover can be happened. Uh, you can see a privilege deletion can be happened. There are lots of things can be happen over there if you try to look. For example, if you go for the hacker one report, CSRF hacker one report, you can try to check one by one all the things. The June 12. If you find any vulnerabilities on the CSR uh, in, in any of the applications, you can simply have will have a good bounty of that. Five hundred dollar is a minimum, which is low over here. Because the major part is the application is will not make a CSR token. Hi, we found a CS, uh, CSR bypass on the Hacker One login page. They find on the Hacker One page. This report describes Hacker One login CSR token bypass. And what they did see, go to the Hacker One HTTP login sign up page. While logging to your account, grab packet through the burp suite. Take an HTML code from the burp engagement tool, generate POC, delete the authentication token. There was an authentication token over here. And what they did, forward the request to the CSR exploited uh, successfully and modify the change successfully. And this could give you a proper validation part. See over here, if I simply enhance the medium part, let's use the medium attack. Now let's try what will happen. So I'm going to use one and one over here. Uh, let's use. Let's use pro as a password. So let's intercept. Now what I can see on the medium part. See. This is also the same thing. This was no different. But sometimes you have to you have to simply remove the PSS ID, which is a session ID over there. Or you can try if it's working or not. Let's try forward. So it will change the password over here. So let's have a try again. Pro. Pro. So let's have a change. So engagement tool, POC, you can see the pop index file, submit, reject it, copy the HTML. Sir, actually, what is this? Which one? Oh, HTML wala part. Right click and click on it, sir. Wo engagement tool, we are generating POC. We are generating HTML form. Okay. We will attack it through this. Are you aware about the OASOP 10, Mohamed? सर थोड़ा थोड़ा बहुत नहीं ओके ओके लीव एड ओके वेयर एम आई राइट नाउ इन एक्सप्लोर फोल्डर ना डॉट एसटीएमएल यस सो लीव एड सीएसआरएफ The 
request didn't look correct. See, there was some mechanism that is protecting the CSRF attack on the server side. Each and every type of attacks can be bypassed over there. So our major perspective would be how we can change the value that can be used for the attack interface. So in this scenario, what do you have to do? Sometimes we have to change the value of the script or we have to change the medium of the translation part. The CSRF value contains a lot of things that can be help us for the attacking phase. The most important part is to understand how, how our, our data is transferring from that side. So when you are intercepting the packet, remember that you have to check all the possibilities. And CSRF injections, if you see over here, they are trying the same thing. In the Spot, uh, Spotify installed user, there was also a vulnerability, which is a hacker, uh, hacker one report. 96470 and you can see they also change the parameter value and they simply uh, use the onloaded submitted button but they were redirected to this one explode installed when explode install is give, giving you the proper value that can be used for the further stage and there are various techniques that can be used over there this Hacker 101 report book can help you a lot to understand how the possibilities can be worked. The URL to discredit a Twitter account referred above. This way, the call Sopika did not validate the CSRF token, which would have allowed a malicious person to make a get call on the victim behalf, thereby disconnecting the victim store from the Twitter. There are lots of things can be happen over there. And the most important thing is to understand the source code. This is a proper request from the client side. Authentication writer disconnect. Since the browser performs a get request to get the image, so at the given URL and the CSR token is validated, a user store is now disconnected. Just you have to send this, this URL to an authenticated user, which is using Twitter right now. And if you execute that, if you execute this one, he will be kicked out. Or a request which is running instead of behalf of the attacker. Baidu, Baidu, account, full account takeover. See this one. They have only changed the parameter value. The title, account, takeover. They have given a skip, worker scope. Chrome service worker JSW1. And the most important thing, we have simply inserted JavaScript, which is this works. Why? Because they have verified, uh, they have redirected the client request to a different one. So there are many other ways that can be helped. So the major perspective, we're going to try to check all the You can see, take away. The most important thing is, is to get mitigation. CSR present another vector of attack and may be executed without a victim even knowing or actively performing an action. He's not aware that instead of his, uh, instead of his and someone is at, uh, executing the command, finding CSR vulnerability may take some indicating and again, and desire testing everything. Generally, web forms are uniformly protected by application framework like your Rails, if the site is performing post request by an APK, can be a different story. A get request and a post request is an important part. So, if you are not aware about the CSRF injection, this book can be also be helped. The Hacker Handbook. Because it's all about the CSRF token which is validated side. There are lots of flows, lots of vulnerabilities, and can be over there. All you have to check 
the path of the children. Attacking station management, weakness in token generation. I guess this will be the minor part. The CSR token. Okay, attacking users and other techniques. Same origin policy reverse, other client side injection attacks. They have given all the things you need over here. This is a basic concept how that web application works. Or let me check for CSRF. If this executed, yep, you can see over here. It's on the chapter 13. This book is really good, helpful for the people who which are basically learning for bug bounty or web application testing part. You can see in cross site request forgery attacks, the attacker creates an innocence looking website that causes the user browser to submit a request directly to the vulnerable application to perform some initial action beneficial to the attacker and that is because of the parameter values can be there and they are helpful in various different things see you can see there are lots of types of vulnerabilities over there For example, it's all about to understand the queries of the backend side. How we can simply uh, customize a packet. Same just like your file inclusion vulnerability. File inclusion vulnerabilities are the ma major vulnerabilities which is basically used to identify the server side information to get the sens sensitive information from the server side. If you look for the file inclusion vulnerability, let me show you. File inclusion vulnerability. The best way you can learn is from the Metasploit Unleashed. They have given a proper scenario based. The file inclusion vulnerability in my layman language are the vulnerability which uh, attacker can enumerate any directories, any files on the server side that can be validated on the later part. Sub some of the sensitive information. And through the file inclusion vulnerability, we can simply uh, perform a directly traversal attack. Directly traversal attack where the data could not be uh, authorized from a normal client. You can see over here, remote file inclusion and LFI, are, uh, local file inclusion, are the vulnerabilities that are often found in the poorly written web application. These vulnerabilities occur when a web application allows the user to submit input in, into files or upload files to the server. And see this one. If I'm simply executing any of this file over here check over here the page is equal to the page parameter contains a file which is your file one dot page file your IP address is 192.160.110 let's check the second one I need a password eight character long so I can show white and seven droppers so you can see these are the files which is fetching from the server side Welcome back admin, your IP address, your user agent, uh, you, you came from and hosted on 2019. So anything which is related to a file from the server side and if, if there is no proper input validation, an attacker simply traversal back or try to get the file or fetch the file from a normal values. For example, you can see. LFI vulnerabilities allow an attacker to read and add something execute files on the data machine. This can be very dangerous because of this web server is misconfigured and running the high privileges the attacker may gain access to the sensitive information. If an attacker is able to place code on the web server through the means, they can have you able to execute arbitrary command. Arbitrary command means you have malicious piece of code. And if it, the main objective is to find the LFI first of all, then the RFI will be easy. And through the RFI, an attacker can simply place or execute any uh, any arbitrary commands. RFI vulnerability are easier to exploit, but less common. Instead of the accessing a file on the local server, the attacker is able to execute code posted on the own machines. 
and which kind of data we look for. See over here, they're going to show you the demonstration on the server side. Remember, the source code, the most important part is the source code over here. And you can see over here, they're given a PHP file, which is a file type, and they are using a get parameter on the page. So the page will be, will be displayed according to the file. So this is the data which is fetching from the server side and how attacker can release the data, they can try to escalate the privileges. This piece of code is, itself is not actually vulnerable, so it's a vulnerability for a regular attacker who does not already get a root access on the machine. Investigate the, the, get, the get variable is interesting enough that would be if, uh, beginning testing or scanning the file inclusion. So in this scenario, what it will be the major objective? We're gonna use LFI to fetch the file from the server side with a dot dot forward slash. And what kind of files we can select? We can find etc issue. You can see this this is your Linux file inclusion and this is your Windows file inclusions. Uh, okay, this one is the public Linux. ETC issue etc proc version, etc profile, etc password, etc shared files, etc bash history. These are the common files from your local server. Processor version, usernames, shadow files, bash histories, log messages, mail root files. See how does it looks like. So first of all, let me try with the daughter forward slash. So over here, the first dot dot you can see is the directory job. And the last one is your root or uh, root path of the file. So which root file root file path I want? I want the etc password file path. The first one was to jump the directory and the second and the three dots, not the three dots, the last dot was to get the root root path. So let's have a look. Sometimes we have to use intruder to fetch the file. No, didn't find the file. So let's use again C. We can see all the etc passwords contain files over here, which has root. You can see Tomcat. You can use any other tools over here, or you can try to intercept the packet also. In repeater mode, drop the packet. See, you can check the proper value that there are some user like your hackable, something like a MySQL, something like a Tomcat. Let's try with the etc issue. Can we find the etc issue file? Sir, it's in a dot or backslash kiss cheese clear? Dietary jump can be clear. Directly traversal के लिए क्योंकि इस dot dot इतने forward slash हम file path को jump कर रहे हैं एक file path दूसरा file path तीसरा चौथा पांचवा छठा okay okay warning look through the etc issue you can get the username and password the username and password is hackable. ETC profile. Let's check if we can find the ETC profile directly. For the ETC profile directly, you will get the environment variables just like this one. 
environment variables which is set by all the users on the server side. If there is an arbitrary command execution over there, an attacker can execute RFI, remote file execution also. If you can fetch any files on the server side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run a normal website which will be my www.bing.com. Let's try this one. And over here you can see they have run, they have executed the command. But over here I'm going to write Bing. Yes, I can see the client has been redirected to client request. So let's have this one. Show response in browser. Okay, it didn't work. Let's try HTTPS. Hmm, now you can see. On that specific server, that was my DBWA, a Bing API is also working. Through RFI, our attacker can also place remote code execution commands on the server side, which can execute it or store on the Let's try crawl.in. So over here, I'm basically executing the command parameter on the file path. See? और ये पूरा का पूरा जो फाइल पार्ट है वो पूरे डीबीडब्ल्यू के अंदर आ गया ये देखो हम ओपन रीडायरेक्शन नहीं देंगे ओपन रीडायरेक्शन ये दूसरा है ओपन रीडायरेक्शन में आपको बेसिकली फाइंड आउट करना होता है कुछ ऐसा रीडायरेक्ट यूआरएल या कभी कभार आपको यूआरएल ऐसे मिल जाता है बहुत सारी वजह होती है This is a different one. Basically, redirect भी कर सकते हो plus आप इसमें command execution भी डाल सकते हो server side पे आप कोई भी page भी insert कर सकते हो. A malicious piece of code भी can be can be also be injected. Majorly, most of the attacker, what they try, they try to upload a file on the server side. We, we have a vulnerability also which is known as file upload vulnerability. File upload vulnerability is a critical vulnerability where an attacker simply put a malicious piece of code on the server side and if the malicious piece, piece of code is executed, it will perform its action. Each and every application has a different functionality. So in this scenario, our major perspective would be to check all the possibilities. So in my scenario, what I'm going to do, I'm going to check one by one. So we have a file upload button, file upload function. So let's see the source code. So the most important part, when you create an application, mean that a normal client to any application install any upload the near so he have to specify the file type so over here you can see they have given a normal PHP file if the assets post uploads where we are going to write into DBW web page to root hackable uploads okay that's a normal thing they have given a path where the file will be upload the path file the path file will be over there uploaded names we can move the file to upload folder also but other make cheese will if we are a programmer and if we have to install we have to upload only image files but they didn't give any whitelisting but a whitelisting will which will be help us to identify the attack surface compare all the levels 
see this one this was the low version that we are using now check the first version medium version the file should be your image and png file only now they have given a uh, input is it an image file or not and they have given the size of the file also because see the name type and size compare this one also the file should be your jpeg jpeg and png only second one was only it is 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 the uh, is the file is an image file or not now they have specified the extension also jpeg png and png so let's have a look let's try to upload a sim simple file Okay. Leave. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna create. Uh, I'm gonna fetch a file. So let's use pen test monkey. Reverse shell PHP. Yes. So I'm gonna try to upload a PHP reverse shell on the server side. कि अगर ये PHP shell upload हो रहा है कि नहीं तो try करते हैं जैसे कि मेरे पास पहले से ही पड़ा हुआ है PHP shell. टूल्स में सो ये जो पी एच पी शेल है ये जिस नॉर्मल शेल बट इसके अंदर मैंने अपना आईपीएड डाल रखा है और जब भी एग्जीक्यूट होगा तो ये एक रिवर्स शेल है फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यानी कि सर्वो साइड में एग्जीक्यूट होने के बाद ये रिवर्ट बैक करेगा टू द लिस्निंग मोड पे और मैंने यहाँ पे पोर्ट नंबर फोर 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 एट दे दिया था so let's have a look can we upload a php shell over there if a attacker can upload a php shell on the server side it could be a big disaster so this was i was talking about if an attacker can execute any php shell so it could be lead to our server take over Server takeover vulnerability. See this one. That cat numeric listening verbose code four four eight. And I'm going to execute the full path of the URL. So when you want to execute any files from the server side, you have to give a proper file path where the file has been uploaded. It was uploaded on the uploaded directory. And the file name was a hackable uploads shell dot php file. So when the shell will execute, it will return as a shell, a remote shell. So just like we have malware threat से बढ़ा था कि जब भी हम कोई shell को execute करते हैं server victim side से तो ये revert back करते हैं अपने loop back IP address में. That could be lead to be anything over there. Our major uh, major agenda of this vulnerability is to take our control on the server side. That could be lead us to vulnerabilities one by one. So my major concern would be check all the possibilities one and the parameter behavior. That could be lead us to different part. And uh, I have config. I can number command shells over here. The one one hundred and nineteen is the IP address. Server takeover. Through the file upload vulnerability, an attacker can take a proper server takeover. Let's try another one. Okay, so. मैं तो ऐसे लो हाई कर देता हूँ मीडियम कर देता हूँ लेट्स ट्राई दिस वन नाउ दे आर एक्सेप्टिंग ओनली द जेपीजी एंड पीएनजी फाइल्स नाउ व्हाट 
सो एक काम करते हैं इसको जेपी पीएनजी कर देते हैं नाउ लेट्स ट्राई द फाइल इज अपलोडिंग सक्सेसफुली चलो फिर से अपलोड करते हैं बट इस बार क्या करूंगा अपने बॉक्स से इंटरसेप्ट करूंगा क्यों बिकॉज मुझे पैकेट को कैप्चर करना है सी द रिक्वेस्ट इज ओवर हियर एंड जो क्लाइंट साइड से जो डेटा ट्रांसफर हो रहा है वो आपकी ये रहा कंटेंट डिस्पोजिशन जो कि यहाँ पे बात हो रही है कंटेंट फाइल्स जो मैक्स फाइल साइज था वो आपका इतना दे रखा है और यहाँ पे देखो अपलोडेड फाइल टाइप जो कि शेल डॉट पी एन जी है वन अटैक ट्राई अटैक ट्राई टू चेंज द वैल्यू ओवर हेयर सो लेट्स डू पी एच पी विल दिस वर्क यस इट विल बी एन अटैक कैन बाईपास ऑल द थिंग्स ओवर हेयर The the file upload upload vulnerability is the major cause where an attacker simply upload or execute malicious piece of code on the server side that can be lead us to a, a server account server takeover. File upload vulnerabilities are the major vulnerability that can be lead us to a different things. One by one, and that could be anything. See this one. If you search for the vulnerabilities over here on the Google file upload vulnerability hacker one report. Undistributed file upload with the dangerous type. April thirteen, twenty twenty. See. Create an account. Simply download a PHP shell from the internet. X editor RSC shell. Then save it to the JPG file. Go back to your Stripe account and click on the profile to the top. Trying to save default dot PHP documents. It does not help to upload the PHP malicious shell. Upload a shell, save it in JPG profile picture. After it, message will pop up. The screen will use it to save. Then go to your URL over here. Scroll down to the drop of file. Try uploading the .php shell earlier. It does not allow you to upload a .php shell. Now upload the shell and save to as JPG. You will allow to upload a malicious shell, save as impact. The consequences of unrestricted files upload can vary. Including complete system takeover, or overloaded the system of the database for the attack. You can see they can put a phishing page on the website. They get permanent accesses on the website, bypass the cross cross origin resource sharing, which is your course. And you can see one by one all the things is given. The JPG file has been uploaded. and this can give you a, a, a good bounty over there and this could be lead to any other vulnerability types the php vulnerabilities and the other vulnerabilities can be useful over there for attacking this so in this scenario we can talk about for the things so you can see they have given insecure capture okay this will not going to work this is missing from my local server
Okay. No issue. SQL injection we have already done. Uh, let's try with the cross-site scripting, which is a major attack. So let's try with the vulnerability over here. So uh, let's have a look over here. What is XSS first of all? And XSS are the major type of vulnerabilities and most of the bug bounter they look for this. So let's have a look over here. If you want to do, if you want to be a big uh, bug bounter, just learn the JavaScript one, uh, Java, JavaScript. So let's try with the cross site record forging attack. So our major. So over here we can see cross site uh, cross site scripting or it's it's known as it's known as your XSS involves a website including uninitiated JavaScript code. Execute uninitiated JavaScript code. Which is subsequently passes on the user who can execute that code by the browser. And cross site scripting is a client side attack. Alert document.domain. Document.domain will execute the website pop up name. You can see this will create a JavaScript function alert and create a simple pop up, and which is the domain name which the access execute. Let me show you one thing. Let's have a look over here. So let's let me show you a simple JavaScript code. So we're gonna pop up a command. So script script alert. Let's use document dot domain. So I guess uh, I'm gonna have to remove this one. Now let's try. Why? Because in the script tag I have user alert function. That's why it's gonna pop up. Test.wellhub.com. It will pop up the website name, which can, which can lead us to refracted. So this search parameter is vulnerable. It's normal thing. You can search for any of the vulnerabilities, but I will say remember the burp suit. You have to check the parameters through the uh, burp suit parameter. That's why it's taking me a lot of time because this is a manual testing part. I'm not using burp suit active scan. See over here, a deflected cross site scripting. There are three types of cross site scripting. The first one is your reflected, the second one is your stored, and the third one is your self. So our major agenda would be reflected XSS. These are not persistent. Persistent means it will not save on the server side. Meaning the XSS is delivered and executed by a single request and a response in a single click. But if I talk about the stored XSS, these attacks are persistent or stored and then executed when the page is loaded to unsuspected users. If the XSS, if the payload has been stored on a specific page, any of the client which visits on that specific page can be executed 
it will show it will execute the first uh, payload part and the self exercise is basically an attack and the attack are also not persistent and are usually used as a part of tricking the person to running the exercise themselves so there are three types of exercises and one is a dome exercise also but let's have a look 500 dollar is a common thing there is a website called uh, swapify simply what he did he simply run a file called test find product this is when we here the most basic you can find and a text entered in the search parameter box wasn't escaped so the javascript enter was executed here is the submitted text from the vulnerability disclosure see test with a single quote semicolon alert and the access name this was the parameter value they were using the reason this why this possible looks the input the user execute the search query and then no execute was written spotify will print a message show, uh, showing that the, no product was found with the name of part, uh, name of test just like this one agar aap kuch socho ki main agar yahan pe part through likhu part through yahan pe reflect ho raha hai yani ki yahan pe javascript run hui hai aapke back end mein theek hai to agar agar ek attacker yahan pe koi bhi ek malicious shell code dal de jaise ki main agar dal do yahan pe doc कुकी की क्या होगा हम क्या यहाँ पे सेशन आईडी स्टील कर सकते हैं देर वॉज नो सेशन आईडी चलो मैं यहाँ पे साइन इन करता हूँ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फॉर द यूजर एम टेस्ट एंड टेस्ट समोन इज ऑलरेडी स्टोर सम डेटा जो है नाउ लेट्स ट्राई द पेलोड सी there was a session cookie with the username test and password test you guys can see this one properly over here an attack can be done in a proper simple syntax so our major agenda would be uh, uh, finding the queries on the server side that could be lead us to different vulnerabilities for example yahan pe agar aap dekho reflected mein main yahan pe part through likhta hu main yahan crawl likhta hu actually hello crawl so let's have a small payload type which is your document or cookie if the payload has been reflected it means there is a javascript for example lots of people ask me sir let's try in the google if you search in the google parameter google will search a lot of thing there will be a lot of query according to chrome scroll cyber security you can check one by one all the features over here the major objective when you find some parameter values you have to use those things and this was a proper session a pss session a token which is benefited right now there are many techniques that can be used over there one by one this was a normal reflected one but over here but over here but over here the most important thing the stored exercises if i simply let's do one thing let's try crawl message security is every where let's sign in and the data has been stored on the server side if the value is been stored on the server side that could lead us to a stored exercise let's try with crawl and my payload i can see this is basically running let's see let's use chromium I'm going to test: Is it work over here or not? It 
Okay. Uh, see, low security piece of ID which was executed. Whenever a client will execute over there, the first thing, if you visit any of the page, it will show you the vulnerability which is pop up over here, which is your PSS ID, the session ID, and it could be lead to session hijacking just to use the cookie parameter to gain access because the data has been stored over there. So cross-site scripting attack will be found in major vulnerabilities. You can find it anywhere. For example, October 15, again $500. Again, the website called Spotify. In Spotify, there was lots of vulnerabilities and this all vulnerabilities that depend on Spotify. The access vulnerability here occurred when JavaScript was entered into the page name field on the forum. A pretty easy task when done with the HTML proxy. So here, the original submission. You can see they have used a command like your see, image source, which is still over here. The image from the image tag, uh, from the image tag to yes, they are using the source one, which is your test and on mouse over if the data if the mouse will be on that specific parameter value it will execute the payload on mouse over is when the keyboard strokes are blocked by the server side attacker try to control that thing with the mouse panel so there are very techniques that we can use but the most important thing is the stored one and the least and the last we have the dome accesses document object message what is dome accesses so dome is basically your uh, you can say development domain and this is an access attack where the attacker payload is executed as a result of modifying the DOOM environment, the domain environment variables. It is inside when you log in or authenticated to the application. Victim browser used by the original content side script so the client side code runs in the unfettered manner. For example, see this one. Now there's an option. Please choose an application, uh, choose a language over here. So I will say okay. Let's use France. So where I can see the parameter value. I can see the parameter value on the URL section. So the default is the default parameter will contain the French word. So let's try to have a look. If the data parameter is on the server side, it can execute other part also, which can lead to cross-site scripting vulnerabilities and if you look for the cross-site scripting vulnerabilities on the hacker one report you will find lots of things xxs with the medium report if you are if you want to do good bug bounty you should learn javascript php and dot js that could be help us a lot The medium reports are the best ones. You can read about the free reports. Vulnerability exists in the client side code rather than the server side code. Okay, showing us DVWA again. You can see on the inspect element also. Go to the security and change the medium. Follow the same process while we need to know security. But you have to execute this one on your temp file. Among there will be among the different methods, we will try to simple method. We can just alter the letter from the script tag to make it the code vulnerable. Sometimes they replace the substring values just like your script. So what attacker do? They change some uh, 
characters just like the upper characters and that could be lead us to a different thing the major perspective that we're going to use over here to find the loopholes on the server side that can be lead us to execution part you can try lots of other websites but the most important thing is to understand how the vulnerability works so these two these two books are important and when i started my bug bounty career i simply checked this book and this one is the bible which i always read when i have a free time when i'm free with any of the things i can simply check this book over here 